Our next guest is, a, is an old friend, John Frugis, of Larry's from, we're talking way back now. Larry was John's wife's boss, and despite that fact, John has remained Larry's friend for many, many years. I think it's because they, uh, you know, they, they turn over the wives, you know. Uh, that's not right. They, they've been great friends for a long time. And they came together. Their families have grown up together. Come on, Larry, come on! Come on, Larry! You're too kind. Um, John vacations in Brockville. Uh, vacations. He brings his boat up. And he stays in Brockville every summer. And of course, when we're eating dinner at Larry's house, John is often there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, John Trudeau. with beaming pride and gratitude that arise to address a great person. <laughs> Someone who has inspired others to do their best and to always do so with humility and respect. A community leader full of love and charity. Yes. A person who likes dogs and small children. <laughs> at least until the last court order. <laughs> <laughs> Larry is a real friend to many people. And he is willing to go to the ends of the earth for them, like Malawi and Nepal, but he keeps coming back. <laughs> Did you know that Larry raises a lot of money for charity, but he always does so remaining anonymous? That's why he never has to sign his name to any of the checks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you that people like Larry just don't grow on trees. They swing on them. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying to Jackie what a bulldozer Larry was for the betterment of the community. And Jackie said, no, Larry's more like a lawnmower. He's hard to get started, he emits foul odors, odors and half the time he doesn't work. <laughs> Jackie is a real physical fit person, as is Jackie, or as is Larry. Do you know that she's even got him to do sit-ups in the TV room? Yep, she puts the remote right between his toes. <laughs> Larry's a devout Christian and an active member in his church. He sings in choir, and when he once taught Sunday school to a group of children, he chose the 23rd Psalm. He read from the Bible and said piously into their little upturned faces, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But I'm not sure it won't surely follow me around a lot. <laughs> Larry makes his own wine. Well, that's what he calls it. Someone sent a sample of his homemade wine to a laboratory and had it analyzed. And the report came back, I'm sorry to tell you that your horse has diabetes. <laughs> community just west of here called Cloyne. Cloyne is a very small place. Well, how, how small is it? Well, it's so small that when the local council once decided to put in a one-way street, they had no way to get all the people back. <laughs> There's not an awful lot to do in Cloyne. So like a lot of young people, Larry decided to do drugs. <laughs> He tried stepping coke, but the ice cubes kept getting stuck in the coke. He uh, tried to be a pharmacist assistant, but he didn't know where to get the prescription bottles into the typewriter. <laughs> For a while, Larry played on the Cloyne High School football team. He tried being a fullback, a halfback, a quarterback, 
but the coach felt he was more of a drawback. <laughs> so Larry bought a motorcycle. When he found out that he couldn't fix the brakes, he made the horn louder. What <laughs> guy, Larry. <laughs> Did you know that people in Cloyne love their beans for dinner? That's so they can enjoy a bubble bath before they go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Larry and I have traveled to both Cancun in Mexico and Keo Coco in Cuba. When in Cancun, Larry decided to rent a car and drive down to the ruins in Tulum, about 100 miles away. I said, you're nuts the way the Mexicans drive around here. There's no bloody way I'll do that. But he said, no, I'm going to do that. So off we went the next day to Tulum. Well, now I know why he doesn't mind driving in a third world country. He's crazier than the Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> he was cutting up taxi cabs and people were jumping into the ditches. Uh, we we're glad to get there in one piece. After a visit uh, to our sister hotel uh, on the Mexican Riviera, we had lunch and a few cervezas. Well, there we parked the rental car in the hotel parking lot amidst these beautiful gardens and a waterfall. When we came out after lunch, uh, Larry decided to reach in the driver's side window and start the car so we, should, we could enjoy air conditioning after a few minutes. We all came out with our beers and put them on the roof of the car to wait for the air conditioning to come on. It's legal there, by the way. <laughs> now, who out there knows what happened next? The hint is, it's a standard shift. Right, well, you guessed it. When Larry hit the ignition and the car lunged forward, Larry's arm is still in the car, and he runs alongside it. He gets superb because I still like it. He goes, red up, whack. We're in all these beautiful flowers and this waterfall garden. <laughs> it was so weird. How <laughs> came the security and, and, what, and they were pissed off, but when they see what happened, they got laughing. Right <laughs> and we were pretty pissed because we spilled all our beer. <laughs> and when we were in Rio Coco one morning, this is in Cuba, we decided we would take advantage of the hotel sailing boats and look for a sail. Uh, these are those little sunfish boats. They carry about two people. Uh, there was a pretty good surf going on, but once uh, we got over the big breakers, I was, it was relatively calm. So I said to Larry, you get on board and I'll push us through those waves in the calmer, uh, calmer water on, on the other side, on, beyond that. So Larry agreed completely. I just assumed that he knew how to sail. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> so up we went, pretty violent through the breakers, but I was getting over my head and losing my footing. So I said to Larry, put the rudder down and I'll climb on board. Remember this? Oh, I remember. <laughs> Larry just kept looking back at me with this big smile. <laughs> and I said, a couple of times, put the rudder down. We need it now. And Larry goes, what's a rudder? <laughs> on board and I got us beating into the wind and decided that we better go back to shore. Larry agreed entirely. I've since had Larry on my good ship Sweetie, a sailboat that I kept in the harbor here in Brockville, and you've become a pretty damn good sailor over the years, Larry. Like rum. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, Larry, a lot of not nice things have happened to you recently, and stuff like that are a true test of character. And you've come through all of that with flying colors. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. And here's your horoscope for October. A benevolent destiny is guiding you quietly into a wonderful future. If you could read the cryptic clues and ciphers, you'd realize that the future, though it may seem harsh, is actually sympathetic to your cause. That's your horoscope. So do well, my friend. So, and I almost forgot, Avon and I have gotten something for you that I think you might need through those Nunavut deep winters. And of course, I know that you're a squash player, and you need support, and you're probably going to need warmth. So we got you a fur-lined <laughs> squash <laughs> 